If it's that bad, I'm sorry. I don't know what else to tell you. Anyhow, we're going to dye some ribbon. You know how the other day I was talking about I was making, uh, taking some fabric and kind of antiquing it? Well, I thought, you know what? With the way ribbon's going to be, if these boats don't get off the dock and we don't get our ribbon, we may have to improvise. So I thought this might not be a bad idea to try this coffee method on some polyester ribbon. So right here I have some really hot boiling water and I'm going to add about three good sized teaspoons to it. If you wanted your ribbon to smell really good or look like it's dirty, you could add some nutmeg and cinnamon. I have this room smelling so good after I did that with this fabric. <laughs> it really turned out good. Yeah, well, it's this. It has a built-in microphone, but that doesn't work as good as it should. So, All right, so we've got the coffee in here. So we're just going to stir it and get it good and mixed up. If you all wouldn't mind spreading the love, I'd appreciate it. Oh, good. Just as long as you can see what I'm doing, hear what I'm saying, I think we should be okay. Alright, now one of the things I did try when I was doing this yesterday, I actually tried it on this ribbon. Now this ribbon probably wasn't a good match because this is kind of like a um, a waxy patch here so it didn't adhere to that really well. I actually did the bear in the tree and it just darkened it a tiny bit but as you know I love to decorate primitive and I've started a whole new series of primitive signs so especially like the Americana that's going to be big this summer so I wanted to well actually that's big all year round so, um, I had some ribbon, let me get it out, but it's really stark white, and the stark white just doesn't go well with this. When you have a primitive sign like this, you need, you need like a beige and a green, you, or I have, let me see if I can grab it off the top shelf, yes. I actually have this that has the burgundy, the, the tan, and the blue in it, which would go really good with this sign, but I don't have anything else to go with it. So I thought, I'm going to try that coffee technique on this ribbon. Let's see if we can tone it down some. Now, my, re, my uh, advice to you is... Use something like a dark towel or a piece of cardboard. What I did when I did mine, I actually have like a, a baking rack here and I had it sitting on my tray and then I had a towel on top of that. I even used like a paper towel holder. I folded it in half and it absorbed coffee really good. And what you really need to start out with is a good clean brush. Thank you, Sue. Okay. So we'll be able to show the before and after of what this is going to look like. Now, of course, the more coffee you have in here, the darker it's going to get. But I'm tired of buying ribbon because I don't have something to match it. I do have something to match it, but it's just a little too light too white so I just want to use this to darken it now if you're doing a wreath I would say cut off about eight eight uh, yards of a 10 inch roll if you're doing if you've got um, tails and your bow this would be an awesome project be nice if it was nice outside I could just like do this on the deck and then hang it on the clothesline to dry I'm sure I could put it in the dryer. Um, the pieces I did yesterday, I did let them dry. 
Now when you do the fabric, they tell you to bake the fabric in an oven for like 10-15 minutes at 200 degrees. Well, I didn't think that was a good idea to do that with the ribbon because of the wire in there. I didn't know how that would act in the in the um, in the oven if it would burn it or not. So I thought it was a good idea just to do it this way. Now this is how it looked when it dried, and this is how it looked when it came right off the roll. I could go back and even do another coat of the coffee and get it darker. Or put more coffee in here to get it darker. Now this should stain pretty good. If you felt you needed to um, coat it with anything, I would spray it with maybe a waterproof spray. They sell it at Walmart. I do all my uh, garden flags I spray with it. It's for tents and stuff like that. Um, that should seal it pretty good for you. But see, I see. I like the one I did yesterday. It dried darker. And you can like just keep going back. I would get like a brush that's going to be the size of your ribbon. So you're not sitting here with a little paintbrush. You could cut your tails ahead of time and do them ahead of time and hang them on a hanger. You just don't want it dripping because then the drips will get all over. But see, that looks really good with that. Now let's do a comparison here. Let's put the really stark white next to it. And then let's put this next to it. See how that blends better? So what I'm saying is, if you don't have access to ribbon right away, because I know a lot of people, a lot of stuff's on back order already, then I would say just let, you know, let your imagination run with you. Now this was one color I didn't do. Hi, hi Carol. I didn't do the yellow, so let's see what happens when we do the yellow. If these dots are like a sticker or paint, it may not stick to that. But look at that. So what I planned on doing, since I did a lot yesterday, I planned on putting these all in an envelope. So I know if I'm going to look for a color in my ribbon and I don't have it, I'm going to go see what I can make with what I have. So I just went down my ribbon rack and started pulling stuff out to see. Now for those just jumping on, we're using just plain coffee. This is Nanny Dot's coffee that was in the fridge. <laughs> I, I stole a couple of teaspoons out of it. So there you have it before or after. I don't think I pulled that one. Oh, I did. So it darkened it a little more. If I wanted darker, I would just wait until this dries and add another layer. Actually, I kind of like working on the towel better because the towel kind of absorbs as we're going along. Here's another one I wanted to try. I wanted to try this bark. Now that kind of feels like an iron-on patch, so I don't know how this is going to do, but we won't know until we try it. And thank you all for joining me. I was trying to go live on both YouTube and here, and it just wouldn't work. Now look at that. It's not taken to the patch. Maybe it would be better if I pulled you in. There, how's that? Does that give you a better view? It's not adhering to the patch, but it's adhering to the white linen underneath. I like that better because I think this is really stark white. This is giving you some dimension by putting that other color in there. So there you have before and there you have after. 
Which one do you like? I kind of like this one. Looks like it has a little more character to it than that does. And that's why I don't use it. Because I don't like what it looks like. So now I have another option. And I'm using a black towel so I can throw it in the washer. And if it doesn't come out, it doesn't come out. It's no big deal. Alright. This one... I'm not sure this is going to take because this has a patch on it kind of like the uh, like this one here. I know, right? I'm just testing the water to see what we can do here. I know all of you have like, I'm sure some of you do, you have this. This has like a white in it. It comes in so many colors. I have it in green, I have it in black, I have it in red, I have it in tan. Well, I went and took that. Oh, I even have it in a green and a red. And see, I took it and I stained it. Here's the blue. That Look how dark that looks. And look at how cool that's going to look with that. I can add it with this because now it matches. So I'm giving myself more options and spending less on ribbon. And that's the whole point behind this. This one here, see how it kind of turned the white like a, a dark tan and then kind of took the green squares and kind of dirtied them up some. There's those. Let's try, let's try this one. I thought we could experiment on my ribbon so you'd have an idea what to do on yours. I think this looks more realistic than the than the uh, ribbon on the roll. And I'll be able to do more with this because of that extra color in there. Okay, so there we got before. And after. It's just a little bit of a shade darker. Now if you let this dry and paint it again, it'll be even darker yet. Here's one I want to try. What I was trying to do with some of the red ones, because I wanted to see if I could get them like a burgundy color, but that didn't work out so good. But I still like what I came up with. go ahead and add a little more coffee to this. This is decaffeinated, so maybe if you use regular coffee. I'm just going to add two more teaspoons to it. And I actually um, saved what was left over from my experiment yesterday. I put it in a ball jar, and then I went ahead, and I think I showed this Monday on my live, I went ahead and painted this with this. So I wouldn't throw it out, there's still other things that you can do with it. Okay, now we got it a little bit darker. And this, this one I'm working on now, no, that wouldn't quite, maybe if we got the gray. Like, okay, this is tan. This was a tan and white. That would go nice with that. 
This one I wasn't too careful when I did it, so it ended up with a stain on the side. But that works really good with that. Sorry, I didn't know you were out of view there. There we go. It's just, this is another way to make your wreath a little more unique. So we have before and we have after. And these are colors that aren't out there right now. So let's try another one. All right, let's try this one. Okay, we'll go back to our Americana sign. Now that we, we did this and got this darker, and see it does dry a little darker. Let's go ahead and try this one. I wasn't sure if it was going to work on this one with these stars, but I think it looks pretty good. So what I'll have to do is I'll have to do like eight yards of one of them, and then we'll use it in the wreath. Okay, so there we got after... And we've got before. I really like the after. So I've got two ribbons for the price of one now that we're doing it this way. Let's go ahead and try this. I've been wanting to use this for a while, but I'm just not liking the starkness of the cream, I guess you would call it. This is kind of sitting on top, but it will sink in on this one. Because I did do this one. Kind of hard to see the difference on that one, but it really does stain up nice. Cause look at that okay that was yesterday's piece and that's what it originally was so I really like that color um, striped primitive is a little hard to find you can find checks and dots but striped primitive is not that easy to find so Go ahead and do that one. This almost looks like um, almost like ticking fabric. And then 
This was the one I did yesterday, so it dried just a little bit darker. See, but it looks old. Can you all see that okay? Um, let's do one of the striped ones. We didn't do that yet. Um, where is it? Uh, the blue and the red. Let me look. Well, I had it. Here it is. Here's the blue. So we'll go ahead and do a piece of the blue. And look how nice that would look with that if we didn't have white and we had that that darker color. Doesn't it? Looks vintage. Look at that one. Wow. This is a polyester ribbon. And boy, that really soaks into that white and distresses it really good. So we could use that with this one because now the white looks the same on both. It's a dark color. This one I would probably go a little darker with it but then we could also take the red and we could get that a little darker too. Because this was from yesterday. What I was trying to do with my colors is come up with the red, the, the red, the blue, and the mustard color. And this was as close as I got to the mustard color by taking the plain yellow and distressing it. That was as close as I got to mustard. So that's how I kind of went about trying to come up with ribbon that would go with the sign. There's some out there, but if I can't get it, this is another alternative. But there you go. That was just a regular yellow. Like this. Look at the difference. You lift that up a little. See how aged that looks? This one was my favorite when I did this one. Doesn't it? I mean, it really aged this. This really looks weathered and <laughs> spilled on and but I just hung them on a hanger over my slop sink and just let them dry overnight. And see, this is how it aged. And this is how it looked. And this, the stain, the mixture I used on this actually had the nutmeg and the cinnamon in it. So not only did it age it, but it left a bit of grunge on it. And it smells really good too. 
So that's what you can get out of the tan and white. And see, you can still form with it. It's still going to make a nice bow. So now we got a lot of choices we could use with this. We've got our stained blue, our stained red, our yellow. Could even get away with using this with it. Because you've got tan here, you've got mustard here. I'm actually going to lighten this just a tiny bit when I print the next one. My printer had a huge hiccup yesterday into today, and I spent so much time on it that I could not print out what we were going to originally work on today. So we went to Plan B. So here we have this ribbon that's actually a red and white, and we're going to make it a tan and white. And it may not be showing up really well against this dark towel, but for purposes of not having this look a real mess, I decided to use the black because it would make it disappear. But look at all look at all the matches you've got here that you can work with this. Look at those two together. I really love how this came out, and I hate that ribbon, but I love this, so I'm going to do the whole roll like that. Thank you. Yeah, and then we've got this one, Faith, Love, and Hoop. That's Missy's favorite. We're going to have some sheep coming up soon to go with that sign. And then this, live well, laugh often, love much. And then we have our apple recipe dumpling sign. I'm thinking maybe a green. I kind of like this with it. And then get maybe that color red. Somebody just saw my ad for all that ribbon on Etsy and just asked me if they could buy the whole bundle if I would ship it. It's like, heck yeah, but you're paying shipping. And here was the black and white that I turned to kind of like a tan and white. And this would go with any of the signs. I'll go ahead, like, maybe I'll take a piece before and after, and then after they all dry, then I'll just take a photo of them. I tried the peach. That came out a little darker, but not as dark as I wanted, so maybe that's one that'll need a second coat. But it also looks so close to tan, which I already have. Look how stained and grungy that looks. I could see even taking some ribbon, Sue, and making a rag bow out of some stained ribbon. That would look really cool. Or just take some um, ticking material. Actually, that just gave me another idea. I have some ticking material right here, but it's not a piece I can use. Shoot. Yep, I have some. I have some green. I have some blue. And I have some red. So let's just take a piece of this and rip. I would probably paint the, the whole piece you're going to use ahead of time. Yeah. 
All right, what we'll do is we'll actually cut a nice big swatch here. But couldn't you see this in a really cool rag though, Sue? All right, so there we got a piece of the blue and white. Now, with the fabric, you could go ahead, <coughs> excuse me, you could go ahead and you could bake this in the oven, which is what I did with the other ones. I actually took, where was it, like these colors. And then I did the coffee on those. Just don't know where I put the swatches. I'll find them. But let's go ahead and do these two. All right. It would, so look at that. Look at how that's taken to that. Sue does some amazing rag bows. We need to get her to do this and do a rag bow. You can always look at her YouTube channel. She's got a lot of, or on her Facebook page, I'm sure there's a lot of old videos, but look at that. That was this color, and now look at it. That really took to that nicely. They tell you not to. They tell you to paint it on and then bake it on like a, a baking rack. See, it really adheres to the fabric better, but it's still doing a nice job on the ribbon. They tell you to bake it for like 10 to 15 minutes at 200. but this would make a really cool rag bow. I'll use this on an upcoming project. I have some ideas already now for this. <laughs> but see how that's how dark that's getting? And when you bake it, it just comes out darker. Cuz like this Here's the one I baked. And this is what it looked like, not with the noon. This is what it looked like before, and that's what it looked like after. Yay, good! Sue's gonna do a rag bow. Yay! That would be awesome. You let me know what colors. I'll come up with a great sign to match it, and I'll send it to you. So, I just sent um, I just sent this apple dumpling one to Missy. But there, look at that. There's a lot we could do with this. You could cut a bunny out of this and make like for the tear tray. There's so much you can do with this. So I guess I'm gonna have to do some. I know, right? It's so cool. And like I said, if you add the nutmeg and the cinnamon and the cloves to it, oh my gosh, it, it puts this dirty coating, almost looks like dirt. I don't know if you can see the little specks. But see all the little specks? And it smells so good. Because I'm actually going to take this. I have two other pieces of fabric. I'm actually going to take this and make some, um, they call them ornies. I'm going to do the outline of a four-leaf clover and stuff them. 
and put them in the tear tray. No, it was a recipe that I had for apple dumplings. Oh, here's the fabric. It was like white before. And let's see what we can do to it now. Because I wanted it to look old because I have a vintage sign that's going to go with it. Like I said, my, my uh, printer... Oh my gosh. Four hours, four and a half hours on that stinking thing. It had a hiccup and boy did it cause so many issues. I lost so much money yesterday into today. Because I had to keep printing to try out and it didn't work and nobody could help me and nobody's getting back to me and I finally figured it out. It was the saturation. But you shouldn't have to change the saturation, not when it worked beforehand. So, so I can make some little ones out of this. Or the big thing with tear trays right now is using little rolling pins. So I can actually, then um, this was fabric I made myself on the machine. I have a special sublimation fabric that I can print my own fabric. Um, so I could wrap this around um, a rolling pin with a piece of ribbon or twine and make it look vintage. And if I use this mixture, I would actually it would actually look like it was dirt. There were dirt was dirt on the fabric. So there you go. What do you think? Did you enjoy that? Did I inspire anybody? Here's the yellow and white from yesterday. Here's the green and white. It's now green and tan. And I want it a little darker. So here's the black. It was black and white. That's now black and tan. They need to start listening to us because we know what colors we want in ribbon but they're not they're not listening they're just printing out what they think we'd like see I like them darker but there you go just with a little bit of coffee and boiling water oh oh I can't wait to you just let me know what colors and when because I want to send you a sign ahead of time to go with it. Let's get that primitive look out there more. You look under primitive wreath signs. There are hardly any. And we need more primitive. We need more vintage. We need more back to our roots. Right? Alright, there's my collage. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think this needs to go darker. It's not dark enough for me. But there you go. You could probably even um, just soak your bow in the bowl. Like soak the fabric you would use for your bow in the bowl. And then bake it. You know what I mean? Like you could probably put this whole piece in there. If I had a bowl big enough for, you know, eight yards of ribbon... I could probably put that in there. Look at that. Boy, that looks dirty. I love that look. Don't you love that look? Look at that. Now I have to make something out of it. <laughs> oh, there's Rachel. Hi, Rach. Thank you, hon. Don't worry. We were just we were just coloring some ribbon with coffee. Because I have ribbon that I haven't used because I didn't like the look of it. It was too stark. And for the new signs that I've come out with, like the Americana, I wanted one that didn't look 
red, white, and blue, I wanted it to look old. So we're actually, we actually just stained a bunch of ribbon. It doesn't always work on all of them, especially like I tried this one, but because this is kind of waxy like a patch, it wouldn't work on there. I even used it to stain the little um, cutting boards that I started making. See? I used it as a paint for that. Didn't it turn out cute? I don't know if you saw my Valentine tear tray, but little cutting boards are are popular. And now I'm going to have to make a sign with a cutting board on it. Actually, oh man, I better write that down. I'll put the recipe on a bigger cutting board, and then we'll have little cutting boards with apples on it. Woo! Thank you, everybody. <laughs> there you go. There you go, Sue. Dry it out on the line. It'll dry for you down where you're at now. There's Floridians will think you're a little whacked out, but we don't care what they think, do we? <laughs> yes, that's what I'll do. I just got a CNC machine, so I'll get my husband to make me a big cutting board that this will sit on, and then we'll have little cutting boards with apples on them. Boop, boop. Knew I'd come up with something. You know me. But look at all the ribbon. This was all red and white, or blue and white green and white. Now we have it all dirty. I don't know if you heard, but a lot of the a lot of the supplies are sitting on the docks and they can't they can't everything's shut down, so nothing's moving. So already you're seeing a difference in um, Sims website and craft outlet so we may have to get creative and start creating our own ribbon to go with what we're doing if we can't get it so I thought why not try this today oh and look at this okay let's take a piece of this oh I was going to do my my um tear tray today but my printer had a hiccup so, now I had to make that for another day. But look at this. My hands, I'm going to smell like coffee. I'm going to stink like coffee. <laughs> I should have put rubber gloves on. Look at that. Isn't that cute? There we go. And then I'll put a little something on here. There. And now you know why I suggested a black tail. <laughs> All right, we have class in about five minutes because our class got canceled yesterday. So um, these signs are not on Etsy yet. I'm hoping by tomorrow to have them on. Hoping by tomorrow to figure out why I can't go on Restream and do YouTube and Facebook at the same time. So... Hopefully, Lori can answer my questions in class and we can get to the bottom of this. Doesn't that look cute? I have them like that, and we also cut out another one. The other one has little ridges in it. See, this is where this one came from. Look at the difference. Isn't that cute? All right, I hope to see you all next Monday, and I'll, I'll uh, see you all soon, and I hope you have a great weekend. And thanks for joining me, thanks for sprinkling, I really appreciate it. All right, see you later.